Jesus, the God of the universe, we are here to worship. We are here to give him praise. We are here to give him honor. We are here to give him glory. Can you please stand with me as we open today's service? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for who you are, for what you have done, what you are about to do. So we've come to give you praise. We've come to worship you. We've come to give you all the honor and all the glory. Because you're the great I am. You are our strong tower. Alpha and Omega. Nothing takes him by surprise. The God that sustained us through the night. The God that does not sleep nor slumber. In our weakness is his strength. Draw nigh unto him and he draws nigh unto you. Holy is our God. Ever loving ever kind, ever merciful. We lift our hearts to you this morning, dear God. And we thank you for all that you have done. We say that you are the one true living God. The one that part the Red Sea, the one that part the River Jordan. We give you all the praise and all the honor and glory. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the man of God our apostle, that you have kept him until this hour, until this day. We thank you for healing him. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory because even before he was formed in his mother's womb, you called him, dear God. Father, we bless your holy name because your anointing is upon him. Father, fresh anointing, fresh word, O oh holy God. Strengthen him in his bones, in the very marrow of his bones. Dear God, give him the unction to function, dear God. Give him the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of you. Holy Lord, we thank you for his helpmate. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory that you have kept our mind, body, and spirit. Give her the strength for every day ahead. Holy Father, give her the grace for the things that you have set before her. Father, we thank you, O Holy God, for the ministry. We thank you for the members, dear God, the leaders, O Holy Father. We speak to every household this morning and we say the power of the, Lord, of the Lord is upon you. The power of God is upon your household. We know, we know that he has healed. We know that he has changed every situation. We know he has lifted your head and we give him all the praise. We give him all the honor. Those of you who can speak in tongues, lift up his holy name and he shared about us ye lord ye lord because you are our um, alpha and omega because you are our deliverer because you are our healer because you are our shield and buckler we have come to say thank you we have come to give you praise we have come to give you honor we have come to give you glory we cry holy holy are you lord gracious are you master father even as the worship team comes dear god you give them the unction dear god cause them to lift a word oh holy father in song we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory in jesus name let's remind ourselves of our covenant scripture it's taken from joshua 1 5 and we read there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua 1.5 And we remind ourselves of our declaration scripture for 2023. And it's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. And we read, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, 
even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Give God some praise, saints. Remember who he is. Remember what he has done for us. Remember he is the God of this universe. As we continue in worship. Amen. We invite the worship team to continue to lead us in worship. Lift your hearts to the God that's, uh, that's of the universe. Amen. Hallelujah. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that'll bless your heart come on tell him I'll bring you more I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself for a song in itself is not what you have required father you said you said you said you search much deeper than the way things appear you're looking into my heart and I'm coming back I'm coming back to the Father we give you glory this morning oh God it's all about you Jesus it's all about you and I'm sorry Lord for the things I've made it when it's all about it's all about you, it's all about you. I'm coming back, I'm coming back to the Come on, wherever you are, lift your hands and let's worship him this morning. It's all about you, all about you. And I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. Oh, Lord, it's all about you. Father, it's all about it's all about you, Jesus. It's all, it's all about you. All about you. It's all about you. Yeah. Oh Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about, it's all about you, it's all about you, it's all about you, it's all about you. Can you tell him again? It's all about you. Come on, you make it personal this morning. Stripped away, and I simply come for the longing, longing just to bring something that's of worth, something that'll bless your heart. Father, I'll bring you, I'll bring you more. I'll bring you. For a song in itself, a song in itself is not what you, you have Father, you said, you said, you said, you search much deeper, deeper within than the way things are been. You're looking into my heart. And I'm coming, I'm coming back, I'm coming back to the Father, it's all about you. It's all about you. All about you. Oh Lord, Father, it's all about you. All about you. Can we say it's all about you? Somebody tell him this morning. It's all about you. 
It's all about you, Jesus. Yeah, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, all about you, all about you, all about you, all about you. One more time, it's all about you, all about you. It's all about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. All about you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, lift your hands and raise your voices this morning. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. It's not about me. It's not about the musicians. It's not about the worship team. Come on, saints. You know, you know. All about you, Father. We lift your name this morning. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together. We came to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're feeling this morning, I encourage you to just let it go and begin to worship Him. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. All together wonderful to Here I am, Lord Here I am Here I am to bow down Here I Come on, let's sing it this morning That you're my God You're all, you're all together All together worthy All together, all together Here I am to bow down, here I am, Father, we lift up your name this morning, there's nobody like you, Lord, you're all together, all together worthy, all together lovely, yeah, one more time, here I am to everybody now. Jesus, take all the glory, God. Hosanna. One more time, just like that. Hosanna, 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 yeah. Oh, Hosanna. In the highest, the highest. Let Jesus. How do we get? 
give you glory this morning, oh God. You are worthy. Oh, oh, be lifted, be lifted, be lifted, be lifted high. Come on, you gotta sing it this morning. Higher, be lifted higher, higher and higher, higher and higher, higher and higher. lift up the name of Jesus this morning at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess situation let us
one, bro. I know, I know, I know it was you. He touched me. Yeah. morning. So now that he's touched you, you're telling him thank you. Come on, choir, help me sing it. Real simple, real simple. All you're telling him in another th- in another tongue is thank you. Thank you. Can you sing it one more time? Say, Father. Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, you, Jesus. We've come to. We're going to go back to the Nigerian lyrics. Say, Baba. Everybody sing it now. Thank you. 
over things that are gone, things that are present, and things that are going to come. Baba Oshé, Baba Oshé, Baba Oshé, Baba Aladupe. Real simple. Can you try it again? Close your eyes and lift your hands. I see you quoted. Let's go one more time. Say Baba. Oh, Baba. Oh, Baba. Baba, Baba. Everybody sing. Say Baba. and give him thanks. Thank him for all that he has done. Thank him for his love. Thank him for his mercies that are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. It's by his mercies. It's by his mercies. It's by his mercies. It's by his mercies. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You may comfortably have your seats. We know, we know that you are happy to hear to give God praise, give God thanks, to remember the week gone, and to speak to the week that is to come, and the month that is to come, and the year that is to come, that we will speak to today. Amen. You will not hear, leave here the same. Amen. Things have already changed. That's why we begin to thank him even now for the changes that are taking place. Amen. Amen. So remind the little ones under 12 that a junior church has started in the back. So you can join. Amen. So you're free to leave now to join your junior church. And give God praise and worship. Uh, we encourage you to bring the kids. Amen. Uh, we prepared all through the summer vacation. We planned it. We took them to Tobago. We took them to Chuck E. Cheese. We took them here and there. But I look out. Where are they now? Amen. So let's bring them. We're not asking them to come. You are the parent. That's the child. Bring them. Amen. We give God praise. Amen. And we thank God for what he's about to do. So as we continue in worship, we want to welcome, welcome, welcome those of you who are coming through these doors for the very first time. 
Are you such a person? If it's the first time you've come through the doors of City of Freedom, first time you're sitting in these views, we just want to recognize you. We want to ask you to stand, please, so we can give you a City of Freedom welcome. Amen. Amen. And I want to add, there are two beautiful ladies standing at my right, and they are visiting us from Guyana. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Heavenly Light, full gospel, world outreach ministry. Amen. And that's under Apostle Ellsworth Williams, and we say hi to him this morning, all the way in Guyana. And we have Sister Angel Stevens and her mom, Rhonda Paul. Amen. So we thank God for you, we thank God for your life, and we really welcome you to City of Freedom, and we pray, God, that we see you again to continue to fellowship with us. Amen. Give them a City of Freedom welcome again, please. You may have your seat. Amen. And we want to welcome those online, those that are fellowshipping with us online. We look forward to you coming in person. Uh, not that the Lord will not touch you where you are, but we want to also experience seeing you and be able to greet you in the physical amen so we thank god for you uh we just have a few announcements amen apostle sends his wishes we know that he's recovering very well so he says good morning good morning to the saints and we really want to thank god for what he's doing in his what god is doing in his life healing speedily we know apostle that he's probably already walking up and down but we thank god <laughs> amen yeah he's walking up and down and he's on listening to us and we say good morning apostle good morning. amen <laughs> And we really want to thank God for uh, Pastor Vashti, his wife, who is standing there with him, all the leaders, amen. So we give a round of applause for the grace and the strength of our Father in our life, in her life, amen. Just a couple of announcements. We want to remind you that this is the second Sunday in September, so you know when we lift the offering, we lift the welfare offering. Uh, you know, we try to help those who are less fortunate. So whatever you have to give, uh, give cheerfully. And as the scripture says, press down, shake it together. It will, it will come back to you. Amen. So we want to give cheerfully when that time comes. We want to thank God that we are about to have our, our family day. Anybody anxious about that? Amen. So it's our gathering, it's our yearly gathering where we come together and we fellowship, we have a good time. The competition is there, we know it's September 30th, we know that you walk with your monies today, dear Sister Keisha with her book out ready to receive from you, amen? And we know also that you have um, pledged your donations in terms of the drinks, in terms of the, uh, the eats, whatever you have, you make sure and get to uh, Deacon Eskezi. Everybody should know who that is by now. You give her your name, you give her the information. If you can't find Deacon Eskezi, you share it with Sister Keisha. We put it all together. We go into Victory Heights. We have place to play. We have place to relax. We have place to talk to people you have never spoken to in church. You just see them at a glance and, and they're gone. And they might be on your team, so that might be a time to work together with them. Amen. So we know there's a team that's going to lose this year. Amen. And you're not on that team. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we bless God for what he's about to do in our lives. Amen. And uh, the widows will the widows will see those that know that they see um, Deacon Sally after service. Uh, just reach out to him and uh, make sure that you get in touch. We had evangelism yesterday, and we want to encourage it. Um, every second Saturday in the month, if you have the time now, it's strange that we serve a God who gives us all his time, but we have to schedule God. I'll stop right there. So if on a Saturday you have some time, and you are free, amen, we do evangelism. The second Saturday, we went through Bonnet last week, um, yesterday, and it, it was a blessing to know that so many people are hungering for the gospel, amen? Just for a word of encouragement, just for a word of prayer. And that's why you're here this morning. You're here to be built up, so when you meet them, you can encourage them, amen? It's not just a ritual coming every Sunday. You are being built up for the week ahead and to touch those that come your way, amen? So I want to ask you to stand with me. 
as we continue in worship. Amen. I know that you're glad you're here. You all look beautiful. You look anxious to hear the word of God, to take a note, to have something to hold on to for the week ahead. The man of God that is about to come is also our evangelist. And when he speaks, amen, he speaks with the power of God. He waits upon the Lord to receive that which should be shared with you. So take it not for granted that whatever he speaks this morning speaks to you. Amen. It's because that's what you're about to hear is what God needed you to hear this morning. So now we want to thank God for the power in his life, the grace in his life, and that he'll continue to keep his household as we welcome evangelist Marcus Coden. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Deacon Sally, Pastor Vashti, our very Apostle Kenneth. May the Lord continue to bless him and keep him. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody know it's not easy coming up here. Amen. It does it has look very easy when Apostle doing it. Amen. Because Apostle have that grace to just flow. You can call him by surprise and say, Apostle, you're preaching now. And sure, sure, you will deliver. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. But I thank God that the grace is upon his life and it is flowing down to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen? So as we lift our hands and thank God for his life, may the Lord continue to bless him. May the Lord continue to strengthen him. May the Lord continue to cover him under his precious blood. Even now, God, we thank you for a successful surgery. We thank you, Lord, that strength has returned to his bones. We thank you, Lord, that you have met all his needs according to your riches and glory. We pray, God, that you continue to keep him and strengthen him. Bless his wife, Pastor Vashti, and keep them, oh God. We pray that you continue to provide for them continually. And may be well with them each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. You may all have your seats. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to minister your word, O oh God. Take full control of this proceedings and let everything be done for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you to all the leaders, all the elders. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. This morning's word is clean on the inside. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. Now we know that Jesus, when he was doing ministry in the book of Matthew, he came across some people, and we call them scribes and Pharisees. And in the old days we know that in order to be clean, there used to be a process. So when they have Passover, they will have a process, go through. When time for them to eat, they will wash their hands, make sure they're clean on the outside. Make sure everything well with them before they partake. Amen? Now that was their purification. But we have a new purification. And that purification is Jesus Christ. Amen? So we want to start in the book of Matthew 23, verse 25 to 28. And we will see what Jesus say about cleaning the outside and not the inside. Now we understand today that there are a lot of beauty products. To beautify the outside. There are a lot of cleansers. All manner of things. To clean. But it do not clean the inside. It did not go. And it do not go to the root cause of our problem. It only go on the surface. Have any of you went to a doctor before? And when after the visit. He gave you one bag of medi medication. But all that medication he do. Is suppress the feeling. It doesn't cure it from the inside. After you take all our medication, is with expectation he's waiting for you next month. He's waiting for you to come back next year. So he's giving you something to suppress, but not to cure. And he knows fully well what he's doing, because that is the strategy. Amen? So they give you things that will suppress, but it does not cure. Today I'm here to tell you that there is a cure. That cure is Jesus Christ. That purification is Jesus Christ. Now, in, in this message, I realized something. I have my beautiful daughter there. She will be 10. 
my lovely wife, and I observe them a day, day, and I, I spill in the business. If you see them, my daughter, I wish she making all kind of mixing thing and putting on her face now. Don't be shy, darling. Amen? And she topic is that she don't want to look old like me and she mother at a particular age. So she's beautifying. Making all kind of mix here. Yeah, Vaseline and this. And sometimes in the night she face greasy. So I watch my, my wife too. She went and buy some stuff. And if you see their face all powder up and thing. I say, God, you're speaking to me here. Now I always say, when God speaks to me, I share it with everybody. Because it is something that everybody needs to hear. So I look at them beautifying because you know sometimes you get some little buttons on your face and thing. But in beautifying the outside and smoothening, they didn't take anything to clean from inside. To purify the body from inside so that the buttons wouldn't come out. Forgive me all you for spilling all your business. Amen? When we go with as well, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't take anything to purify from the outside. So I have this question. Do we want to be clean on the inside? To allow God to use us as he created us to be? Or do we want to remain soiled and unused by the hand of God? Amen? And if your answer is yes to that, then you are on the right track. You may ask me why this is important. The scripture says in the book of John 1 verse 8, 1 John 1, 8, it says, If we say, for any reason, that we have no sin, we lie and we deceive ourselves. Amen? So it don't matter who we are. The word of God is telling us that if we say, at any time at all, that we have no sin, and that we have not sin, he say we are telling lies, and we deceive ourselves. So we ought not to think in any way that we have reached. That is why the Apostle Paul said, I have not reached yet. I don't think that I have reached yet. But he's on the way. In the same manner, we are on the way. So we must always, as believers, try our best to keep the inside clean. It is not the outside flesh that the Lord is coming back for. It is what is inside that he's coming back for. We see in this world today that many believers have gone astray, conforming to the things of the world. Conforming to 2020 vision, as they say. And we pattern our lifestyle with the things of the world. And say we're still serving God. No. God have a standard and he wants us to be clean always. So we're going to go to Matthew 23, verse 25 to 28. It says, Woe unto you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You cleanse the outward of the cup. So Jesus is using parable to tell them about the self. He said you clean the outside of the cup and the dish. But inside they are full of grease, greed, and self-indignation, indulgence. Pardon me all I have a new glasses. It's been my little problems. I ain't a custom yet. Amen? I ain't a custom yet. Harley, better take it off. My eyes good from here. He said, Blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will be clean. So, what he's telling us here that the cleaning must come from inside out. Amen. The cleaning must come from inside out, not outside in. It don't work so. How many of us have pots and dishes? And the outside of the pot looks very shiny and nice. But when we go inside the pot, the inside of the pot, the food has soiled this pot. And you see it staying up. Especially when you boil saffron. It does leave inside of the pot yellow. It does make you feel that this is an old dog pot and I must throw it away. Because of the saffron. So he's telling us that we must clean from the inside out. And not the, in, not the outside in. Amen? So we must go backward and not the way we want it to go. Romans 3.23 say, He said we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And this is across the board for every man that walk on this earth. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
Have we forgotten that the scripture said that our righteousness is as filthy rags? So it doesn't matter how righteous we are. In the sight of God is as filthy rags. So we must continue to keep our mind focused that we may walk in obedience all the time to stay clean. Verse of our reach. Verse 25. Go again, Pastor. You finish. Okay, nice. 28. 27. He said, Woe unto you, teachers of the law. So it was from 25 to 28. And Pharisees, you hypocrites, you are like whitewash, tombs. So which mean is tombs? It's full of dead bones, but on the outside it's whitewash. We all know it has something they sell whitewash. They put it on stone and they take off all the moss. This is what he's making reference to them as he said, You all are like whitewash tombs, which look beautiful on the outside. But on the inside are full of bones of dead men and everything unclean. This is Jesus speaking to the scribes and Pharisees. Men that was washing their hands before they go to dinner. Men that couldn't go in their bed without cleaning themselves properly and thinking to themselves that they was righteous. But in all their righteousness, Jesus was telling them that that way all they're doing is a waste of time. All they're doing it backwards. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people. As righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So he's telling them that on the, ins on the outside, they appear righteous with what they do and what they teach. But on the inside, they are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. I say to you today, that will never be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen? What people see on the outside will be what you carry on the inside. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I want us to understand, when God created us, he didn't. He made us for a purpose. Amen. He took his time and add some fine details to each and every one of us. Amen. When you look in the mirror, you see those fine details of what he has done. And you say, God, I am beautiful. Why? Because that is the handiwork of our Lord and Savior. Amen? And he did it in a unique way that each and every one of us is different from the other. No two is the same. But ask yourself this question. Did when God created us, he put sin in us? No, he didn't. He didn't put it. Amen? So the cup that he made the reference to in this book of Matthew... The handyman that created this cup, he created with a purpose, just as God created us with a purpose. The handyman created this cup for other people to use it. And so too God created us for his use, not for our own purpose. It is for, her, for he to use us. The handyman that created this cup, created this cup for it to be honored and for people to say, wow, this cup is beautiful. So too God has created each and every one of us. So that when people see us, they will say, this is the handiwork of God. Lift your right hand up. Wherever they are planning against you, that they will see your downfall. They will wait in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What the Lord created you for, you will fulfill the purpose of the Lord in Jesus' name. So I want you to answer this. We were made for God to take pride in what he has made. And glorify him always. Amen. So, I want you to look at Isaiah 43 verse 7. Before we go there, let me go to, we went, okay. Isaiah 43 7. Isaiah 43 7. My daughter always telling her daddy, you need to improve your handwriting. Amen. I take her class. Daddy, you need to improve your handwriting because she handwriting nice. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 verse 7, it said, Everyone who is called by the name, by my name, whom I created for my glory. So understand what he created us for. Everyone who has been called by his name, he created for his glory. Who I formed and made. So the purpose is for God to take glory. Not for us to take glory in ourselves. It's for God to take glory. Amen? So as believers today, it is not no more of what we say. 
We can say we are born again. We have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Yes, the scripture says that we must confess with our mouth and believe with our heart. Amen? And we shall be saved. I agree. I am not telling you to disagree. But that is not enough as believers anymore. Our actions, our speech, our dressing, and every mannerism that we go about every day must emulate Christ. There must not be any flaw in our behavior when we are on the street, when we are in our workplace. We cannot be today, holy, holy, and tomorrow, they see we down the road jamming in our band. We can't do that. It must be one thing or nothing. The scripture says we can't be lukewarm because God is going to spit us out. We can't be one foot inside and one foot outside. We must have both feet inside. So our behavior and our attitude, our dressing, everything that we do must be according to scripture. Amen? Matthew 5 verse 16. Look at what God said here. Matthew 5 verse 16. He said in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see. As Apostle has said, hold on a minute. He didn't say that they may hear. He said that they may see. Which means that when you walk the road, people may see Christ in you. Now for some reason, if you find yourself that men chasing after you, and when they come chasing after you as a lady, or woman chasing after you as a man, and when they come, it's the wrong motive they come in. They're not chasing after you because they see Christ. Then the wrong light is shining. Amen? If they're chasing after you because something other than Christ, they didn't see Christ in you to come to say, what is this that you have that is different from other people? And you turn and say, no, it's Jesus that I carry. If they come for anything other than that, then the wrong light is shining. It means they are seeing an other light and not the light that Christ wants them to see. Why? Because if they see the light that God wants them to see, Look at the next part. He said they may see your good deeds and glorify the Father in heaven. So if they come to you not to glorify the Father in heaven, it means that there's another light that is shining in you that is not the light of Christ. May you never be that light that is not of Christ in Jesus' name. And he said another thing. He said even when you're shining, they don't take you and put you under here so that nobody may see. He put you high up for everybody to see. Why? Because in the seeing you, they see Christ. In the seeing you and your good deeds, God take all the glory. So you can't hide here. You must be on top here to shine. May you shine your shine in Jesus' name. May your light be bright in Jesus' name. There's a song that a, a local artist says, song, Bijan Pierre is the name. He said, he make a statement in his verse. He said, every time, the Lord do his inspection, meaning every time the Lord come to inspect him, may he see himself in him. I pray for you today and for me also, that whenever the Lord desire to inspect our life, he will see himself in the mighty name of Jesus. He will see himself in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So think about this. When we go for a job, if we portray a character that the person that is doing the interview do not like, you will fail. Don't matter how much qualification you have. The light that you carry when you go, if they don't like the light that is shining, you will not get the job. Amen? Because they are looking for specific qualities in you that will suit their company. They don't want when you come and they hire you. In the back room, you're looking to swindle the people money. No, they don't want that. So in the same manner, Christ is looking for us to emulate his son. So that when he looked down, he will see himself and say, these people, they are doing well. Amen? May we be what God is looking for right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is in our light that the people see Christ. The psalmist David understood this. That is why he forever continually try in all his ways to maintain his cleanness. Psalm 51 verse 10 to 12. David forever tried 
to maintain a clean heart with God. We know he did some evil things, but in the end, his focus was to keep maintaining his cleansiness in the sight of God. Psalm 51 verse 10, he said, Create in me a pure heart. Remember David, the Bible said that David was a man after God's heart. It don't mean that he had God's heart in him. It means that he was forever chasing after God's heart. Because if I say, my daughter is after my heart, it means that she resembles something. She has something in she that is, belongs to me. Like we like the same food. We like the same thing. So David of himself understood that he must forever chase after the things that God liked. So he said to himself, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. The other translation said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. He understood that if he didn't have a right spirit and a clean heart before God, he will forever be in trouble. May our hearts be pure before our Father in Jesus' name. Verse 11 to 12, he said, Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Remember I said last week that salvation belonged to the Lord. Amen? So he said, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, God's salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So David forever... Go before the Lord in prayer and humbling himself that God will make him clean. Amen? John 4, James 4 verse 8. Now we have desires each and every one of us to do the will of the Lord. Amen? But there is a catch. The Bible tells us that we must come near to God and he will come near to us. Wash our hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So these things that he mentioned there must never be a part of us. Because with these things we cannot draw near to God. And in so doing he will not draw near to us. Amen? Am I being understood this morning? The Lord himself will never dwell in no unclean temple. He can't. 59, Isaiah 59 verse 2. The Lord cannot dwell in nothing that is unclean. So we must always forever... Recognize that we need to go before the Lord with humbleness and ask God to purify us. Because we know that we sin in words, thoughts, and deeds. We could think evil without acting on the evil. It is a sin still. Amen? Even though we didn't do it, we taught it. And it still is a sin. That is why the scripture in the book of Romans tells us, be clean from the mind, be transformed from the mind, so that we will not think no evil thoughts. We will not think no evil deeds. How many of us today have found ourselves in a situation that we don't want to do this, you know, but we end up doing it? How many of us? Amen? It is not because you're full of sin in you, you know. It's because the scripture is being fulfilled. He said the spirit and the flesh is always at war. Always. There's no time at all that the battle will cease between you and your flesh. It is forever a battle till the Lord comes. So we must continually pray God that he will help us prevail over our flesh. Our worst enemy is ourself. It's not nobody. Amen? So that is why we must first win the battle over ourselves By suppressing our spirit. By suppressing the flesh with the spirit. So that the spirit will take full control and God will be manifested in ourselves by his spirit. Amen? So we understand that God will not dwell in no unclean temple. Give me a minute here because I realize we are having a little technical day. So I'll get on my phone. Amen. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 59. Yeah, I have it. Isaiah 59. As a person is here, it's important to walk with your Bible. Amen? Yeah. I will get on my phone. I have my Bible here. Don't worry. Got it fine. I realize these days like they're trying to give you glasses by force with the fine writing. Now. Trying to save paper. Amen? <laughs> Isaiah 59 verse 2. He said, but your iniquity have separated between you and your God. 
and your sin has hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So this is God telling us that if we have anything that is displeasing for in, in us for him, that will bring separation between we and our God. Amen? It will bring separation between us and God. It is not because, as I said, sin is reigning in us continually. No. The Bible says God forbid. But it's because they always at war. And sometimes we give yield to the wrong one. Deacon was saying yesterday to us, and I go and let out the files there again, it wasn't much. He said to us yesterday that sometimes whilst we was doing evangelism, sometimes the Lord prompts him to pray or to do something when we minister to somebody. And sometimes he, he, he go against it. Now that is between he and he God because we would not have known that unless he told us. Amen? But he of himself know fully well that that is something that he have to work on. Just as each one of us know fully well what is plaguing us. We don't need nobody to tell us what is fighting us each and every day. We know fully well. So we must win the battle over that circumstance. Whether it be hiding in the back and puffing a cigarette, drinking a beer, it doesn't matter. Each and every one of us have some circumstance that we are at war with right now to be victorious over it. Because we know that the scripture said that the devil is like a roaring lion walking around, seeing who he go devour. Meaning that he's looking for opportunity to take gain over us. He doesn't have gain, but he's looking for the opportunity. May we never give him the opportunity in Jesus' name. So we're going to 2 Corinthians verse 6 verse 16. And I'm not going to be too long, amen? Hallelujah. I'm not going to be too long this week. Last week I get jokes. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians verse 6 verse 16. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 6 verse 16. Amen. Glory be to God. What argument? Oh, 16 to 18. Sorry, Pastor. Verse 6, 16 to 18. Thanks. What argument is there between the temple of God and idols? Now, the Apostle Paul is making reference to matters that was the Corinthians was troubled with. So he's telling them, what agreement do God's temple have with the temple of idols? For we, for we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live in them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. So this is God telling us, giving us this instruction. Therefore, come out from them and be separated. Now there's a consequence for us not coming out from amongst, or from amongst them and being separated. If we are not separated, God is not going to dwell. He's not going to come. He's not going to be your God because you are dabbling with God's temple and idols. And it don't work that way. Amen? So he said, come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Touch not on clean things and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, said the Lord God Almighty. God is instructing us that we must live clean forever. It is only living clean that both you and God will walk together. He said, can two walk except they agree? If we do not agree with God, he cannot walk with us. Because he will be instructing us and we will be fighting him. No God, that is not your word. It's not you say that. Let me go and look for a scripture to back up what you say. And if we ain't find one, we say that is not God's word and we're not going to do it. When in fact he has been prompting you all time, instructing you on what to do. But because as sheep, we don't know his voice, we say that is not the voice of God. And then when circumstance happen, we blame God. Where is this God? Have he not said that he will never let anything happen to me? Yes, he has said it and he is faithful. But have you take up the challenge of recognizing when it is the voice of the Lord and saying, yes, Lord, I will obey? Have we done that? No. So in other terms, God cannot work with us if we are fighting him. He made the, the reference, Jesus made the reference in the book of Matthew when they asked him about casting out demon. He said, if Satan fighting against himself, the house cannot stand. It is so with God. If you, who is God's child, is fighting against God, it can't work. The house can't stand. Amen? 
it can't stand because you're fighting against the builder. You're fighting against the one that does everything through you. He cannot manifest his power through you because you are fighting. As Deacon said, when he say lay hands, you say no, I'm not laying hands. That person that you didn't lay hands on will not get the deliverance that was coming to them. If you lay hands. He said go to somebody and do this. You didn't go. That person cannot receive the blessing. Yes, God will make another way. But that day that they was to receive it, you have denied them because you have fought against the instruction of God. So when they was to get it today, they might get it tomorrow when somebody else comes. No. We must be obedient to his voice. And in so he will work with us. Amen? Matthew 15, verse 16 to 20. Jesus told the disciples this. And he was speaking in parable again. Understand this. It is not what you eat or what we drink that defiles our body. It is not that. So that's why I say it's not no more of what we say alone, but our actions must make sure that it line up with God's word. They must see Christ in us even when we walk the street. They mustn't see something other than the light that's supposed to be shined. Amen? It must be that light that Christ speaks of. Peter said, explain this parable to us. 16. And you still so dull, Jesus asks them. Jesus asks, are you still so dull? Meaning you don't comprehend, you don't understand yet. Don't you see that whatever entering the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? We all know what that means. Amen? So he's telling them that this thing doesn't defile you. And the scribes and Pharisees had believed that you're not supposed to eat this and you're not supposed to eat that. So he was making reference and bringing correction to them. But the things that come out of a person's mouth, so he's saying, when we walk away from his instructions and go and say contrary to what he say, that is what defiles us. Amen? When we're supposed to bless and we curse, those are the things that defiles us. When we're supposed to speak truth and we lie, those are the things that defile us. It is not in eating pork. I'm not saying that you should eat pork. If you don't want to eat it, that is you. Glory be to God. But do not condemn our next man who eat pork. Amen? Do not condemn our next man who eat it. Because the scriptures say that what the Lord has made clean is clean. So we ought not to do anything contrary to the word of the Lord. So he's telling us that these things... That we hold reverence to and think defiles us is not that. It's our speech. Our behavior and our mannerism is what defiles us. It is not what we eat. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts. You see where it comes from? From the heart. That is why I say that we must be clean on the inside. So that what comes out must be clean things. We cannot have our brothers and sisters every single day walking among us and we love up and we kiss up and whatever we pray we greet. And when we go home, we have evil thoughts in the back of our mind towards our brothers and sisters. That is defiling us. It is evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, all these things. Go and slander our brothers and our sisters. Accuse them falsely. These are what defiles a person. But eating with unwashed hands, this is the scribes and Pharisees method. Because you have to wash your hand before you eat. He said, eating with unwashed hand, that doesn't defile a man at all. So I say to you today that if you eat with unwashed hands and any man come to you and say you're committing sin, tell them the scripture says a lie. Amen? It don't defile you at all. God is not angry with you when you, wash, when you eat with unwashed hands. Yes, you should wash your hands because God knows where you come out. But it does not defile you as a Christian or a believer. Amen? Verse 20, right. So the scripture tells us in 1 Peter 1, verse 14 to 16. So we must be holy in everything that we do. Why? Because it is expected of us by our Savior. As obedient children, you hear what he say? If we are obedient, lift your hands up. All right, so no... All not obedient, the ones that are lifting all your hand. I don't understand. If you are obedient to God, would lift your hands up. 
Ayu na to bijan chong bala. Asi nya han. Next man in the back. Lift your hand. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to say anything. I, but apostle does use that technique. I ain't going to say. Don't worry yourself. Right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. If you're obedient, you lift your hands. I pray that your obedience will continue in Jesus' name. Lift your hands up again. As we join together in unity, may our obedience be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing will persuade us to be disobedient to our God. In Jesus' name. Amen. So it says, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you were living in ignorance. So as I said before, the desires that come out of our heart is the desires that we had when we were ignorant, before we came to know the truth. The scripture said that we must not continue in that because now that we have known the truth as believers, we must rest down that old thing that was once us. Amen? But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Which means when you speak, it must be holy conversation. Yes, I'm not saying that we don't make joke, but it mustn't be the joke that go offend somebody. It mustn't be the joke that go bring dispute between you and a brother and sister. It mustn't be that kind of joke. It mustn't be the joke that will cause a husband and wife when they go home to be at war. It must not be that joke. It must not come from our mouth because we must be holy in everything that we do, even in our speech. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. God is telling us because he is holy, we as his children, obedient, must be holy also. Receive the grace to be holy in the mighty name of Jesus. So we must be holy to be used by him at all times. Amen. Matthew 9, verse 16 to 17. We know that the Bible records that David, as I said, was a man after God's heart. Because he continually asked God for mercy, asked God for grace, because he knew that he might do things that will offend God. So every day, this must be our desire and our prayer. Oh God, even though to our eyes we haven't done anything that is displeasing to God, we must still go to God and say, God, forgive me. Amen? We must still go. We must not let a day pass without asking God for your forgiveness and your mercy. Because we don't know the thoughts all the time that sometimes we think and we don't even know. But remember this. Even though you mightn't recognize what God has put in you for you to accomplish, the devil knows it. The devil knows it and he does not forget it. So he's going to fight you and I every single day to make sure that thing doesn't come to pass. Even if we doesn't remember every day that God say that I am this, he knows fully well that God says you are such and such. And he must make sure and try that you don't succeed. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen? Matthew 9, 16, 17. No one saw a patch Pronounce this for me, somebody. On shrub, on shrub clothes, on an old garment. For the patch will pull, will pull away from the garment, making it the tear worse. So he's saying that if we have a pants, long time they say patch pants. We all know that where this patch of pants thing come out from, right? From long time they say just patch over something over it to secure it. He's saying that no one will take that and put on a, on, a, on our garment because it will make it worse. Neither do people pour new wine in old wine skin. I am saying to us today, for God to pour his spirit into us, we cannot have the old wine skin. We must have the new wine skin. If they do, the skin will burst. The wine will run out. And the wine skin will be ruined. No. No. They pour new wine into new wine skin, and both are preserved. In order for us to be preserved, our mindset and our behavior and our mannerism must line up with the new wine skin. So that the spirit may come into us that is the new spirit. Amen? Otherwise, the old cannot contain the new. And it will burst and spill out. Amen? May new wine skin rest upon us in Jesus' name. So David desired to be clean. You could read Psalm 51 verse 1 to 5 and you'll see in all those verses David was pleading with God for forgiveness, for mercy, to cleanse him continually. Amen? 
So understand this. That the heart of our problem is a heart problem. And I'm not telling you that you have irregular heartbeat. No. Not that I mean. I mean the root cause of our problem is our problem. So we have a heart problem. Amen? And no amount of exercise or scripture reading will help us until we go to the man who is able to cleanse us from that. The man who is able to repair it. We could pray from night until day until we recognize that we have an issue and say, God, I have this issue. Remove it. Amen? Because we know the scriptures say, if we confess our faults, he is faithful, which means he desires us to come to him and say, God, I recognize that I have a situation. Whatever it may be, you, I am not here to tell you what your problem is. I'm here to tell you that if for some reason you have one, as I know that I do, go to God with that situation and be specific and say, God, rectify this issue that I have in here. Amen? We must go to him. No man is too big to submit to our God. We will never do the exploit that he wants us to do until we recognize things that have so easily besought us. The Apostle Paul wrote, he said that we must shake off the weight. That weight he's speaking about is not the set of bags that when we was going on point 14 to establish the weight apostle. It had a vagrant you start bags on the back from here to by the pillow there. Not that amount of weight. He's speaking about the things and the circumstances that we know is in our life troubling us that we refuse to hand over to them. Apostle, Apostle does say many times when he ministered that sometimes we come here and he pray for us and we get delivered and as soon as we reach by the corner, we take back up the stuff. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen? May we never pick up what we lay down. Hallelujah. Amen? So you can read Psalms 51 verse 1 to 5. So understand this. In order to fix this heart problem, we must make the heart pure. Amen? And the only so we can do it is by going to the man who cleans the heart. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. It says that the heart of a man is deceitfully wicked. If God could tell us that we must understand that our heart is not good. We might look good to people, but we have wicked and evil desires in us. May God deliver us from our thoughts in Jesus' name. So you can read Jeremiah 17 verse 9 also. So look at a man that allow with circumstance and a situation to set him back. Genesis 4 verse 1 to 7. He had a heart problem. He knew he had a heart problem, but he refused to rectify it. Genesis 4 verse 1 to 7. He knew he had a problem. He said, Adam made love to his wife Eve. And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Look at what she pronounced over this young man when he was born. Eh? She said, with the help of the Lord, she has brought forth this man. Which means that was the gift of God. She didn't get it nowhere else. It was God that gave it to her. Later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks. And Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of his fruits of his soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought offering, fat, portion from some of his firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel. And his offering. Don't go yet, Pastor Vashti. Go back to the verse. Look at the difference here. Abel brought of his first. Which means that was the first that God gave him. He brought firstborn of his flocks. Which means he take the best out of the stock and bring to God. Amen. He didn't take no thing that wasn't halfway, halfway and give to God. Because he recognized who God is in his life. He said, and God had favor on his offering. Go to the next verse, Pastor. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. 
So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Now we recognize that he had a problem because not well. In that verse that he faced became downcast. God didn't tell him anything yet. God didn't tell him anything yet that what he was doing was wrong. You know? He recognized that God didn't accept his gift because of his heart and how he gave it. Amen? So he recognized his heart problem there and then. God didn't tell him yet. Then the Lord said to him in verse 6, Cain, why are you angry? So he became angry because God didn't show him favor because he knew fully well what he was doing. How many of us have circumstances in our life and we know fully well it has been fighting us and we refuse to hand it over to God. We refuse to say, God, help me in this situation. And we allow this situation to cause us to miss our blessing. I say to you today that that situation must go to God today. You must hand it over in Jesus' name. Whether you like it or not, Spirit of the living God, arrest you and take that situation out of your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether it be children giving trouble, husband misbehaving, it doesn't matter. God, take control of that situation today. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not, do what is right. Sin is crouching at the door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. See what God tell him here. Don't allow that thought, that wrong thing that you do. At that point, he could have changed his mind there and then and say, God, forgive me. And he gives and start afresh and he would have been accepted. But no, he refused. God tell him, do not let the desire have rule over you. Which means he still had the authority and the power to take control of that circumstance and say, no, sin, you will not have dominion over me. But he refused. Next verse. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. So at this point, he allowed the sin that God told him in the verse before not to take rule over him. He allowed it to take rule over him. And because he knew for a fact that he couldn't do God nothing, the only other option was to take his anger and his vengeance upon his brother. Amen? And so he slew his brother. And in so doing, he caused the problem that caused him to have problem all the days of his life. We know that the scripture further down, God cursed him and put a mark upon him. But it didn't stop there. God permit that no man should kill him because vengeance 77 and all this will fall upon the man. So he had a protection mark even though. May our life never reach the life of Cain in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Why I say this? Because God sees and knows the heart. God look at the heart and not the outward. Amen? First Samuel 16 verse 7. Look what he told Samuel when he was about to anoint David. He said, but God, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at, so he looked differently to us. That is why I say, as we walk the streets, we must emulate the things that God look at and not what people want to see. They must only see what God see in us. Amen. If they see anything other than what God sees in us, it means a different light is shining than the light of Christ. He doesn't look at the things people look at, meaning that he don't look at the outward appearance, how we look beautiful when we're walking down the street. Oh, that sister and that brother look real handsome and lovely together. They look so elegant and they stroll. No, God don't look at that. You're walking down the road looking all so good, when we're going down the road looking nice, but inside we heart, we're plotting evil against somebody. That is what God is seeing. Amen? That is what God is seeing. Those thoughts and those behavior. We're going down the road. Nice, looking good. People complimenting us. Yes, they're looking good. But at the end of it all, God seeing the bitter unforgiveness that we had against somebody last year or last month. And we still have it in our heart today. 
But we come to service every day and we say hallelujah. Nothing wrong with that. But God seeing that bitterness that you have. And he understands that you have not forgiven yourself. Nor have you forgiven the sister or the brother that has offended you. And then we up, as I said. And we leave the church and we say the church has no power. The man of God, he ain't doing what God called him to do. And we bad mouth the apostle. We bad mouth the pastor. The bishop and the leader and everybody. And we spread all manner of rumors against the church. Them sisters and them. When I come through the door, they just watch me with all kind of ring up face. That church I no love eh? And they leave and they go gone. When? In fact, it is you that have the heart matter. It is you that need your heart to be healed. It is you that need your heart to be cured from your bad mind. There's another song that a local artist say. He say bleach doesn't wash away bad mind. How many people know that song? He said, bleach doesn't take it away. He said, white and color clothes could never wash together because the color goes soily white. How many of us have made the mistake and put red inside our white shirt and when the shirt come out, it look white red? It is because the fact that those two things cannot mix. So we must understand and we must maintain a clean lifestyle in our words, thoughts, and our deeds in order for God to use us. Amen? Otherwise, we become unused. And we will sit and say, why haven't God decided to use me yet? It's because, brother, sisters, apostles said, there is something that you know and God know that we need to change. Before he can establish us where he wants us to go. He will not use us. And when we reach where we want to go, we still have that bitterness. And in so doing, we scatter the flock or we scatter the church. And at the end of the day, we blame somebody else for what happened. When in fact, it is us that need the changing. Amen? That is why when we look in the mirror every day, we must examine ourselves and see if we still be in faith. That is what the scriptures say. Search ourselves daily and make sure that we are on the right track. A couple of years ago, Pastor Vashi said that, shared a testimony that she dreamt that a ship or a plane, I can't remember too well, came and took everybody and some was left behind. Lift up your right hand. You will never be among the number that is left behind in the mighty name of Jesus. You know your family will be left behind at no cost. The Lord will save each and every one of us and our families in the name of Jesus. But there's a catch. We must obey. We must walk in his ways. If we refuse to walk in his ways, then sadly to say, we will miss it. The parable that Jesus gave that he said, many on that day will say, Lord, Lord, I have done in your name. And I have cast out demon. And he went further to say that there will be weeping and moaning and gnashing of teeth. That scripture is not for the ungodly. The ungodly cannot cry when they know they was living evil all the days of their life. The ungodly can say, God, but we have cast out in your name. That is believers that was doing the will of the Lord. Thinking they was on the right track. But in the end of it all, they missed it for some simple reason. And there is where the weeping and moaning and gnashing of teeth will be. Because we will say, God, you leave us behind and we have done so much for you. Not knowing that we had a heart issue that needed to be cured. Amen? May our heart issues be revolved in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at the next man who made a terrible mistake. Acts 5 verse 1 to 11. A man who had a heart matter. Greed was his heart matter. And he refused to give up the heart matter to the Lord. Instead, he played smart. Now a man named Anaios, together with his wife Sophia, also sold a piece of property with his wife full knowledge he kept back part of the money for himself. So he and his wife conspire. It's not like he do it behind she back and she didn't know. If she did, God would have forgive she. But she knew fully well and she was a partaker of the unrighteousness. That is why the scriptures say, don't follow a multitude to do evil. Because in the long run, you will be judged according to what you have done. Sophia and his, Sophia and his wife, Sophia and her husband, plotted their mischief, right? And they went in her knowledge and his knowledge and kept back a part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostle's feet. Come and he rested at the apostle's feet for bribe. 
Amen? Come to bribe the apostle. When he know he greedy and he grab all the shots and he do all the evil and he come now to try and pacify the apostle. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart? Look where he is, is in his heart. Amen? In his heart is where he conspires his mischief. That you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you receive from the land. Didn't it belong to you before? What apostles tell him it was yours. You didn't want to try no tricks. You didn't want to come with no stories because it was yours. Nobody put a gun to your head or a chain to your neck and tell you to go and sell it and do this and give we all. No, it is yours. Amen? You had the free will to do what you are pleased with it. It is yours. You don't need to come and tell lies. Didn't it belong to you before you sold it? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? Meaning you could have do what you want with it. What made you think of doing such a thing? It was the devil. Oh. That is where you blame. How many of us have blamed the devil and say it was the devil? Oh. It's the devil who do it. He come by night and he tell me do it. Enough. Ah, as apostles have said, the devil will lift his hand up and say, God, not me. Oh. I didn't tell these people anything. You know. I suggested they did it on their own. Remember, the devil don't force nobody, he suggests. So the devil put the thought in Ananias' mind, and he carried out the act, he and his wife. So that is what made him think it. You have no lie just to human, to human beings, but to God. You have not just lied to human beings, but to God. So what the apostle is telling him, you didn't lie to me, you're lying to God, the Holy Spirit. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. I say to you today, you will never fall down and die because of any mistake in Jesus' name. God will give the grace for us to acknowledge our faults and come to him for forgiveness. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. So they all fell into fear by what happened. Next verse. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried it out and buried him. May that never be a portion in Jesus' name. That wrap up there is just like if his dog they pick up and just throw it away. Mean no use at all. Not even a proper burial. Just roll him in something and carry him back and throw him because of his deceitfulness. Amen. About three hours later, his wife came, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. May you never lie because of your husband or your wife in the mighty name of Jesus. If they want to go to hell, let it go. As apostles say, there is no husband and wife in heaven who... None. So when they want to do, let it do on their own. And you as wife, when you want to do, let it do on your own. Take yourself out. Because when God comes to visit, he will visit both parties who was involved. Remember, he's a just God. He doesn't do one and leave the other. You will face your punishment for your action. Amen? On that final day, you will face it. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord. So she, after he dead, she don't know. Poor she. Come and end up in problems. Listen. The feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door. Meaning they're waiting to carry you. And they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came and Phil, Phil find her dead, carried her out, and buried her beside her husband. So a fitting end for the mischief. They buried together. I say to you, it will never be your portion. No. It will never be your portion, no, my portion. No. no, they conspire the mischief. But we must remember, the Holy Spirit of the living God knows all things. Remember the verse before say that God don't see what man see. 
So what Peter couldn't see, the Holy Spirit saw and revealed to Peter what they had done. It's so in the same way. When we come before our apostle with all manner of trickery, mind you, he has already been shown by the Spirit of the living God the tricks and the tricks we that we are coming with. Amen? So we will not get through because we know he's a man full of the Spirit. So we will not get through. Amen? Psalm verse 139. And you can stand on your feet as I'm about to close. Like I said, I'm not going to be too long. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 139 verse 23 to 20, 24. Psalmist David says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense ways in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. That is why I said David, the Bible records David, a man after God's heart. Because he continually desired to have clean heart and hands and mind. We know that when David was with with Saul and Saul came against him. David, the Bible records, had the opportunity that he could have killed Saul more than once. But you know what he said? I can't touch the man of God who God has appointed. So he desired to always be clean in everything that he do and reverence God as Lord. That is why all his, his books that he wrote have this message. He said, and lead me on everlasting path. Micah 6 verse 8. We cannot at all say we don't know what the Lord requires of us. We cannot. There is no time at all we were able to say, God, I didn't know. No. He has shown you, O oh mortal, what is good, which means he has shown us already. And what does the Lord require of us? He has already shown us that we can't say we don't know. To act justly, meaning that we must be fair in everything that we do. And to love mercy, meaning that we must have mercy. Even when we must give up our right, we must have mercy. Mercy doesn't mean that we only give mercy when it suits us best. It must mean that we must give it even when we don't want to give it. Even when it is difficult for us to say, brother, I forgive you. Sister, I forgive you. The scripture tells us that we must love mercy. Meaning it must be our first and second order to be just and to love mercy. It don't matter what may have come your way. Mercy is what we must give. And to walk humbly with God. Meaning humble ourselves before the Lord our God. Always. Amen. Hebrews 4 verse 16. Let us then, when we have come to the point that we know that we have done the will of the Lord and have surrendered our thoughts and everything that concerns us to him, he said, let us then approach God's throne of grace with the confidence so that we ourselves may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So when the time of need comes, that we are faced with challenges, Go boldly before God and tell him the situation because he said we will receive grace and mercy in that time when we need it the most. I say to you and pray for you today and myself that the grace of the Lord will locate us in our time of need. The grace and mercy of the Lord will locate us in our situations and our circumstances. When difficulty arises, we will know that the grace and mercy of the Lord is available to us to overcome every challenge in our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that this word have been a blessing to you and I also. That we will walk in total obedience to the word of the Lord. Amen.
as I hand over back to our deacon. God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus again, please. Amen. As we want to ask the ushers to come, uh, as we said, um, this is the second Sunday. So we will raise an offering for the welfare. So follow the instructions of the ushers. Those on this side will go this way, come out, go back down the hall. Same for those on this side. You come this way, go that way, go that way, and you come back to your seat. Amen. As I ask the worship team to lead us in a, a song of worship. Amen. He never failed me yet, he never failed me, my Jesus Christ never failed me yet, and everywhere I go I wonder where to know that Jesus Christ never failed me yet, he never failed me, he never failed me, my Jesus Christ never failed me yet. I know my God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life when I have seen my God turn it around. I know, I know, I know. I know my God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life when I have seen my God turn it around. I know my God will turn it around. Yes, I know. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life. I have seen my God turn it around. Hallelujah. Evangelist. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for every hand, O oh God, that had to give. Amen. If there's anyone here, God, that didn't have to give, we pray, O oh God, that you will meet them at the point of their need. Pray that you continue to bless them in everything that they do. We pray, God, that you will open doors unto them that no man can shut. Amen. We pray, God, that their bands will overflow with your blessing, O God. Your word said, I try you and we will see if you will not open the storehouse. And God, we Hallelujah. thank you, Lord, we know that the storehouses have been opened in City of Freedom. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we know this will be used for your honor and your glory. Freedance of your kingdom. In Jesus', Jesus name. Amen. 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 You may comfortably have your seat briefly. As we lift the offering for the welfare, as we said, we try to help those who are less fortunate. Amen. So we give cheerfully. And just to remind you of our services during the week, we know that on every Tuesday at 12 noon, we have our midday service. Amen. So, from 12 noon, we have our midday service. Amen. So, we want to encourage you when you have that time, when you are available. If you have, well, hopefully not a day off, but you're just on vacation, you can make that time. Come over because we're sure that you will not leave the same. Amen. And on Wednesday, we're back here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. for our moment of truth again. So that you'll come, you'll receive a word that will help you during the week. And on Friday, we're back at 6 p.m. for our deliverance service. 
and come. This is a time of prayer. This is a time you are able to come to the altar and you have your hands, have hands laid on you to lift those situations. Amen. Are we okay with that? But we're back here in the sanctuary on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m. without fail because we need to refill. We need to come back and give God praise and thanks for the week gone by and for the week to come. Amen. Are we okay with that? Thank you. So we just want to ask you to stand as evangelist comes and <laughs> close us in prayer. Amen. Yeah, Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Amen. Before we close off, as our pastor, my pastor always do it, and it was instructed of us that we do it also. Is there anyone that is in need of prayer? To come forward, we'll pray with you. Also, is there anyone here that have not received Jesus as their Lord and Savior? The opportunity is here also for you to receive him. The blessings of the Lord only attaches itself to you when you come into the family. It can't attach itself to you if you are not in the family. Amen? As Apostle does say, God and no bastard children. So you must come. He said, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. So it is only when you have received, you are counted as a son. If you have not received, sorry, you are not a son. Amen? You could come to church, go to church, pray all you want. But until you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that a sonship will not attach itself to you. And in so doing, the blessings of the Lord could never locate you. And why I say this, if it is possible for God to bless a sinner or a man that have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, then none of us would be saved. Because we would stay where we are and reap his reward. The blessings that you get is because of his word that he said the rain must fall on the just and the unjust. So this is just basically what every man gets. But there are special ones assigned to you when you have received the Lord and Savior Jesus. And no other man except he come into the house of the family of God could receive that blessing. Amen? Hallelujah. If not, we close. May you all stand. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray, O oh God, that as you leave this place, that the Lord will be with you forever. We pray that as you go back to your homes and come into contact with your families, that their lives will be changed in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that as you leave, the ability to function in the assignment that God has called us will rest upon each and every one of us. That spirit of boldness that is upon our apostle, I declare to you that it must flow from this altar down to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. That spirit that is on him that is able to declare the word without favor rest upon each and every one of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Where you see sin, you will say it's sin. And where you see righteousness, you will declare there is righteousness. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said that the judgment of the Lord must first start at the house of God. So which means we must come in alignment with his word. Because he's going to judge us if we do not. Amen. We pray for this sister here that is here for the first time. These beautiful ladies all the way from Guyana. That the Lord bless them. Keep them. We pray for that next sister in the back there. That have a nephew facing circumstances. Agree with her and pray that the Lord will turn that situation around. That that mountain that is standing before your nephew will move. That plan of the enemy over his life will not come to pass. We speak deliverance over him. Wherever they have gone and plotted evil against him, we say it shall not work. We come into agreement that it shall not work. The word of God said that it will form but it will not prosper. We declare that no evil will come upon his life. And we say that you will testify of what the Lord has done for him. In Jesus' name, we soak and cover each and every one of you with the blood of Jesus. As you go, go in the power of the Lord. Go in his glory. Do what the Lord has called you to do. It is well with you this week. 
Apostle have a covenant he makes here always that he will not bury and so we agree with him that he will not bury any one of you or your children this year, next year, for as long as you may live. When he do it, it will be because of your ripe old age. It will not be for, you will not be cut short, sickness will not be your portion, the doctors and them will not eat your money, no deceiver will influence you to spend unwisely in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak healing over you and your household and your children. May the blessings of the Lord be with you from now until forever. In Jesus' name, go. It is well with you. In Jesus' name, amen.